Welcome to the College Fairs of Greater Denver. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here today. Um, my name is Anna and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on our website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Lynn University. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Tamara. I am from Lynn University. We are located in the heart of South Florida. There's a, a lot of great cities around us, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. It's great for students for their networking and job opportunities, as well as some personal uh, growth as well. Some great things about Lynn is that we've re-engineered uh, your general education classes into the dialogues. We are test optional. We've been test optional for a couple of years, so this is not new to us. We have a lot of institutional aid we're giving to our students every year. 100 degree program, six colleges, students are coming from international and out of state, much like you. We were the first college to partner with Apple a couple years ago as an Apple distinguished school. Every student who comes to Lynn gets an iPad. Uh, it's digital, it's integrated. Most of your textbooks are loaded onto there. And um, we have about a 3.5 admitted high school GPA with about 3000 students on our campus. So we are a small private school. Some great things that Lynn has accomplished is we are a LEED certified uh, building. This is our university center, kind of where the hub of student life is. We've removed all plastic water bottles from our campus uh, and we have aluminum cans. With that iPad integration, uh, we've saved a lot of trees and a lot of textbooks. And like I said, it is a money saver as well. Most of, your most of your textbooks are loaded onto that iPad, so no need to purchase textbooks. And as you can see all around our university center, some of the wonderful things that we were to accomplish um, to kind of be a sustainable school. One of the things that came out of COVID was our block schedule. So uh, as a way to contact trace our students, um, we moved to a block schedule uh, this year as well. We saw student participation go up, we saw grades increase, and we saw class attendance go up. So what that means is we've broken the semester into four blocks. So each block is four weeks and you will take one or two classes in four weeks. You take your final and you are done. So you're only um, in class for two to two and a half hours a day, Monday through Thursday, focusing on one class at a time. That leaves students with a lot of time for jobs, internships, community service, all of those hands-on learning that you want, especially with those Fridays off. We call them free Fridays. They're up to you uh, to kind of get that student experience. These are all of the wonderful majors we have. Like I said, we have over 100 degree programs. I like to highlight our College of Aeronautics. I also like to highlight our fashion and retail being in so close to Miami. Students have access to um, Miami Swim Week, um, uh, Miami Fashion Week as well. And I like to highlight our criminal justice and forensic investigation. Another great opportunity for our students at Lynn is our accelerated degree program. You can um, get your Lynn degree within three years. Again, a huge cost saver, as you can see. Um, you can save over $50,000. You can also engage in our three plus one. So in four years, you can get your bachelor's and your master's at Lynn University. And we have partnered with um, a local law school to do a three plus three law year degree as well. Great options for our students. As far as sports goes, we're division two, but we've won 25 national championships and 13 state titles. So pretty good at sports. We have seven housing uh, residential uh, buildings on our campus. We have three eateries. Um, the one in the university center is open 24 hours a day. So you can always get your yummy snacks and munchies when you need. And as we go through the next few pictures, I wanna highlight our application process. Uh, we have no application fee for this year. We're on the Common App, so just find us there. We also have Lynn's application. Doesn't matter to me which one you use, but we're on a holistic review basis. So we'll look at your transcripts. We'll look at the kinds of classes you're taking and your grades. Uh, but like I said, we're test optional. So we read your essay and we do require one letter of recommendation. 
All of that is going to tell me who you are as a student um, and if you're a great fit for Lynn. So we're really looking for your personality. We want to know your goals and your dreams and your aspirations through that essay and that letter of recommendation. All students uh, are reviewed for merit-based scholarship. Those range anywhere between $7,000 and $18,000 a year annually. So when you apply to Lynn, you will receive an admission decision and a scholarship amount. Our first deadline is coming up in November 15th. And if anyone has any questions, you can find me here. You can scan that QR code and download my contact. My phone number and my email is on there. And thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Florida Southern College. All right, so despite the name, we're actually headed a little bit further north in Florida, up towards the center of the state. Florida Southern is a small private college located in Lakeland, Florida, which is about halfway between Orlando and Tampa. So we're in between two big cities and in a town of about 115,000 people. Um, the college itself is relatively small. We run about 3,000 total students. Um, and one of our other big claims to fame is that we're actually a national historic landmark for our collection of Frank Lloyd Wright architecture. So that gives the campus a really special and unique feeling and it's a really cool place to visit. But coming to college to learn, right? So let's talk academics. Um, we span about 70 different academic programs, everything from a direct entry nursing program to business, to education, to traditional liberal arts degrees like um, psychology. So if you're interested in studying for example, pre-physical therapy, if you're interested in a particular area of business, we can probably figure out an option that's going to work for you. If you have any questions about particular majors, please let me know. Um, in general, we see a strong showing in areas like health sciences and the nursing program, business, communications. Um, we also have a very strong education program, musical theater. So all of that good stuff um, at the undergraduate level. And then we do have 11 masters and doctoral degrees if you're interested in furthering your education, either with us through something like an accelerated masters of accountancy or MBA, or through a partnership program that we have for things like med school and engineering school. So again, happy to talk with you about those in more detail. But really, regardless of what you study at Florida Southern, it's going to be hands-on, it's going to be research heavy and really engaged and active in your experiences. Um, we really emphasize you being able to dive into your work and really take ownership of your academic experience. And that's really facilitated by the small class sizes and the teaching methods that our professors use. One of the other things that we really try to emphasize for students is the idea of kind of having these three framing experiences for you as you're going through your four years at FSC. So the first big one is study abroad. We guarantee study abroad to everyone who comes through. We want to make sure that you get a chance to go overseas and really get that international experience. We also guarantee that you'll do at least one internship. It's pretty common for students to do more. Um, some majors will require them, but others will just give you the opportunity to do them. And we put a lot of effort into making sure that you can find opportunities that are going to suit your professional goals and your academic goals to really launch you into the next phase of your life. And then the third big one is that we want you to graduate on time. We know that college is an investment and we wanna make sure that you're coming to Florida Southern and loving it and having a great four years here. And then we want you to move on and kind of kickstart the next phase of your life. So we do guarantee that four year graduation. But what all of that winds up meaning is that we really have a phenomenal placement rate for students going on into graduate school. Give or take about a third of Florida Southern students will continue directly into either like an MBA, into medical school, into graduate study, or they'll go into the workforce with that other two thirds. So we really partner with a lot of places around the state and around the country to place students into jobs and into professions to really launch you there. We are a residential campus and guarantee housing for all four years. So you can see some of the options here that are pretty typical for first years. As you get older, most students will move into the apartments that the college owns, um, and there's videos of those available on the website. We do include a housing stipend as part of your um, merit scholarship at Florida Southern, so we do help cover that a little bit, which is nice, and it's a super beautiful place to live. Um, if you are an athlete, we are also NCAA Division II, so if you're interested in playing for one of the sports teams, I can definitely put you in contact with the coaches. But otherwise, if you're like me and you feel like you fall over, if you try to run too hard, that's cool. Um, we also have a very strong intramural program. There's plenty of other things to do on campus. 
So if sports aren't your jam, you can get involved with community service, Greek life, a whole bunch of different clubs and organizations. Um, we really have an active and vibrant campus life and it's really easy to become part of something that you're really excited about. So application wise, um, we are on the common application and the coalition application, or you can use FSC's specific application. And those are all going to be free. We don't have a cost to apply. And you will need to submit your high school transcript and preferably a letter of recommendation to us. Um, we are SAT or ACT optional, both for admission and for scholarships, and that includes the nursing program. Um, and this is kind of the class of 2024's middle 50%. So um, again, we also do a holistic review process that GPA is weighted according to our system. So if you have questions about how that's gonna be calculated or what the admissions review process is like, I'm more than happy to talk you through that. In terms of financial aid, you will automatically be evaluated for merit scholarships when we receive your application, starting at about $7,000, going up to about $21,000. There's also a couple of specific scholarships that require a separate application, and those do have some early deadlines coming up. So if you are a senior targeting the prestige scholarships, it might be a good idea to start working on those. Um, there's also a couple of additional scholarships that you can receive if you're an athlete, an artist, a musician, if you're in particular majors. So we'll work with you to really craft a fully formed financial aid package and I'm the one who will be working through it with you. So if you do have any questions about financial aid and scholarships, my contact information is going to be here at the end and I'm more than happy to talk with you about it. We are open for visits and there's a ton of virtual options. So definitely check those out. And I'll leave my contact information here and in the chat. Thank you. Next you'll be hearing from Palm Beach Atlantic University. Alrighty, perfect. Hi, thank you all for joining. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick so you can see my presentation. Alrighty, so I am from PBA. Um, so I actually, let's see. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just looking at the chat. Um, so I'm from Palm Beach Atlantic University. I actually grew up um, in the Colorado. Your slideshow is showing the next slide too. If you go to just settings and then you just flip them oh let's see yeah okay well, perfect is that good now yeah perfect Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I am a rep from Palm Beach Atlantic University. I'm a senior admissions counselor here. Um, and I graduated from Palm Beach Atlantic University about four years ago. Um, and I actually grew up in Colorado. So I know all about um, the transition from coming out of state um, and coming to Florida. So we're actually in West Palm Beach. We're located about an hour north of Miami if you just drove straight up up the coast. Um, the first slide is our campus. Um, not the big, big buildings, but the ones to the left a little bit is where we are kind of nestled in between the intercoastal and then we're only a half mile away from the beach um, so students can actually walk to the beach from the residence halls just across this bridge which is super nice um, so that's one huge perk about living in West Palm um, our main focus is at PBA. Um, so our mission essentially is enlightening minds, enriching souls and extending hands. Um, that has to do with the fact that we're a Christian university. Um, so that's one of the most important things about PBA. And um, so we're definitely one of um, South Florida's leading Christian universities um, and just a great place to go for students who wanna grow their faith. So um, <clears throat> we have lots of different worship and chapel opportunities in, in school, um, lots of different Bible studies to join and things like that. And we also encourage students to get connected with churches as well while they're down here. So we have a Church Connect Day um, and actually Church Connect Week where different churches from all over the area and the city will come on campus to introduce themselves and see if you're a good fit um, or see if you want to join and everything. Um, we also are very involved in community service. So students have a community service requirement, which is actually a great way to kind of figure out um, what kind of field you want to be in and everything. And a lot of times those communities community service opportunities can actually lead to internships and full-time jobs and things like that. 
<clears throat> for our academics, we have over 50 academic programs. A lot of those include um, different concentrations within majors. So in reality, we have close to 100 different majors. Um, so we have accelerated programs in a lot of different areas. Um, <clears throat> we're a liberal arts university, so we're not really focused too much on honing in on one major, but we notice that some of the most popular and some of the biggest majors that we have at PBA are going to be anything in business. Uh, we have an excellent nursing program, marine bio, since we're so close to the beach. Um, which is actually what I studied when I was in school. Um, <clears throat> education is also a very popular major. Um, ministry, of course, since we're a Christian school, and then also um, pre-pharmacy. We also have um, doctorate of pharmacy programs at PBA as well. So our average class size is about 17 students. So we're a pretty small school, about 2,200 undergraduate students, um, and student to faculty ratio is about 12 to one. So you really get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from professors. They help you with not just your classes, but also with um, life, with jobs, with internships, with literally anything that you need. Um, I still have so many professors that say hi to me um, in the hallways at PBA all the time. So it's really like a family, um, even though you still are kind of meeting new people all the time. Alrighty, so for student life, uh, like I said, we have about 2,200 undergrad, lots of in-state and out-of-state students. So we have about 60% of our students are from Florida and then 40% uh, of our students are from out-of-state. Um, we have six on-campus residence halls. So there's a lot of different options of places that you can live in. Um, some of those options are actually right on the water, which is really nice. And then we also have our brand new on-campus apartments, which come fully furnished. Um, they're brand new and they were just built over the summer. And um, we also have four on-campus dining options, which includes Chick-fil-A, super exciting, um, Einstein's, and then a new coffee shop that we actually built on campus last year as well. And then of course, we're walking distance from the beach in downtown West Palm Beach. There's so many fun things to do on and off campus, um, and we're in walking distance to the movies, the different coffee shops, um, just so many different things. So that's kind of what I liked about actually studying in a city was being able to do all of those fun things and all the time. Um, and then for life on campus, so we, it was actually really easy to transition for me as an out-of-state student because we have a welcome week um, where they put you in little groups so you get to meet people before you even start classes, so you kind of already have like built-in friends. Um, connect week will connect you with jobs, clubs that you can participate in, um, church connect week, things like that, and then we have so many different clubs and organizations actually on campus, um, including Monday Night Live, some things are like geared more to your, um, which is kind of like our our version of like SNL. Um, we also have other things just kind of geared to things that you're interested in, but also things kind of focused on your major, like um, pre -ner or like nursing club, pre farm club, um, pre med club, pre vet club. <laughs> so many other ones like that too. So we are open for in-person visits. So to schedule an individual visit, um, you can actually just go to our website, go, click the big red button that says apply. That's probably, or that says visits, probably the easiest way. Um, and we also have specialty days there that when you scroll down, you'll see what the days are that we have available. Um, so we give tours almost every day is available. So we have Monday through Saturday tours. For the application process, we do have a free application, um, so there's no cost for that. Our average scores are posted there, but those are just kind of the averages and not necessarily what you need to get in. We don't really have a minimum that you need. Um, and then test scores are optional as well, and we review applications within about 72 hours. So um, we'll start the review process um, sometime next week, and then after that, you'll hear soon about a decision and the scholarship process and everything. So we do have a lot of academic scholarships. In the past, they've been up to $20,000 just upon acceptance, um, and we should have that information coming out soon about what that looks like. Um, and also, you'll be able to file a FAFSA to add any federal aid and things like that. And then also, we have other scholarships on campus through our programs and everything like that, like honors and different programs like that. So this here at the end is my contact information. So again, my name's Kat. Um, I'm a senior admissions counselor. My Email is right there as well, and so is my phone number um, if you need to reach me. So I'll go ahead and put it in the chat as well. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Eckerd College. All right, thank you so much. Give me a second to share my screen. Do, 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 do. All right, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dylan Cassidy. I'm Assistant Director of Admission here at Eckerd. I've got five minutes, so I'm gonna jump right in. 
Um, Eckerd College, we are a small liberal arts and science college located in St. Pete. I feel like we're going up the coast here with these presentations. Uh, to give you an idea, St. Pete is within the Tampa Bay area. It's uh, right in the middle of Florida on the uh, left side. Um, this is an aerial shot of our campus. Um, so everything you see here, uh, with that peninsula is Eckerd's campus. Now, uh, since I only have about five or six minutes, I usually like to highlight what makes Eckerd unique. So we are small in the fact that we have about 2,000 students total, um, and we are just an undergraduate institution. Um, but in our small campus body, we represent 47 states, 41 countries, and on average, students are traveling about 1,000 miles away from home to come here. And most students do live on campus for all four years while they're here at Eckerd. Now, with that being said, we understand it could be a little bit intimidating to move 1,000 plus miles home, which is why we actually have all first year students arrive three weeks early and take part in what we call autumn term. We should call it hot term because it's in Florida in August, so it will be hot for you coming from Denver, but luckily all of our buildings are air conditioned. Um, but during autumn term, you take part in academic coursework. You take your first college class during this time, and then we have a number of campus activities community service events, and then this is when you do meet your faculty mentor and peer mentor who will help you throughout all four years in picking classes that are catered to your major and then also um, classes outside for major because we are also a liberal arts institution, so we want you to explore all different options that you have here at the college. Now, after your first year, that short-term class moves during the month of January where you take part in what we call winter term. So our academic calendar, it's on a 414 academic calendar. All that means is you take four classes in the fall, one class during winter term, and then four in the spring. And winter term is a oops, winter term is a very common time for students to take part in a study abroad program or get some research done during this time without the distraction of four classes that you got to focus on. Here is a list of all of our majors and minors. I will keep this on the screen for a few seconds so you can see if the major that you are interested in is listed here. Um, anything with an asterisk is a minor, um, but some notable majors, environmental studies, marine science, animal studies. We have a few business programs. We have a number of pre-professional programs such as pre-law, um, pre-vet, um, lots of different programs to check out. Um, so here is a picture of uh, on campus. So to the right is one of our academic buildings. It's our marine science laboratory. To the left is the Boca Sega Bay. Um, we do take full advantage of the outdoors here at Eckerd. We take a very hands-on approach to our education. So if you're studying something on environmental conservation, uh, you'll likely get to go out into the water, take samples, bring it back into the classroom. Um, so we're very known as being an outdoorsy campus. And there is a dog on this campus. We are a pet-friendly college. Um, we have recently been ranked the number one college for pets. So if you have a furry friend you'd like to bring, they are welcome with a few restrictions to that. Um, we also have one of the country's most comprehensive waterfront programs in that you have, you have canoes, uh, kayaks, paddle boards, sailboats that students can rent out. Sometimes they are used for leisure opportunities, but we also have tugboats, powerboats that we use for academic opportunities as well. Um, we, uh, we also have a search and rescue team, uh, which is one of our water-based academic um, ways to get involved. So students act as first responders to any maritime distress call. One of many ways to get involved. Uh, involved. We have over a hundred clubs and organizations that range from academic clubs, such as our professional business organizations to our um, the Marine Science Club or our Creative Writing Club to some of our more fun clubs like we have a cheese club, we have a number of intramural sports that you can get involved in. Um, and we have one of the, we have the country's only Jewish scuba diving club called Scooby Jew, open to Jewish and non Jewish students. Um, but I think that does a good job of highlighting our unique personality um, here at Eckerd. Um, so if you are interested in applying, uh, we are on the Common App. Uh, we are test optional. Um, the average GPA of students applying is about a 3.4 on a 4.0 scale. Um, and then we'll also look at college essay, letter of recommendation. Um, if you submit your application by November 15th, it is considered early action. And it's also a free application as long as it's in by December 1st. So why not apply early, get a free application. 
And then lastly, Eckerd is in a book called The Colleges That Change Lives. It highlights 40 small liberal arts colleges that just do it different. Um, and Eckerd's chapter starts off by saying, Eckerd might seem like the perfect spot for an easy college career, four years of marked by sun, surf, and sand. But if you're looking for a vacation, you should enroll elsewhere. I feel like I've talked about the beach a lot during this uh, presentation, um, but we are much more than just a college of the beach. If you are looking for a comprehensive liberal arts program that will encourage you to challenge yourself, think outside the box, change your beliefs, challenge your beliefs, um, and get some hands-on experience while you're in college, then Eckerd could be the right spot for you. Um, but it is a nice perk that we do have that beach on our campus. And I think that is it. So thank you for your time. I will type in my contact information in here. Thank you. Next we'll be hearing from Jacksonville University. Let's see if I can figure out how to unshare. Thank you. Hey guys, bear with me. My computer is not agreeing with me right now, so I apologize. Um, my name is Jessica White. I wish that we were allowing pets on campus, but we are not at this current time. So that is one thing that Eckerd has going for them that I wish we did. Um, but again, my name is Jessica White. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, both students and parents. And Dylan, I apologize that I accidentally pressed send too early in the chat there. So I just wanted to apologize. Um, if I threw you off there, but you crushed it. So Jacksonville University is a small private liberal arts school, just like a lot of my fellow colleagues on this call. Our undergraduate population is, I hope I'm sharing my screen. If anyone is able to please tell me if I am. I'm you sorry. are not. Okay, are you able okay. to see now? now? You are. Yes. Thank you so much. I apologize, guys. I could not see anything, so I'm pressing buttons in the dark. Jacksonville University is our undergraduate population is just under 3000 students on campus and so our graduate population because we do have graduate and professional studies as well just under 1300 students. You can see our campus breakdown right here we have 33% of students that identify as students of color. We also have 64% female 36% male and our students identify our students come from 51 countries 47 states and four districts and territories. On our campus, we have over 100 different majors, minors, and programs. So if you are somebody that has had an interest in studying marine science for your entire life, but has also danced since you were three years old and want to continue both of those, we can really help you partner those things together. So through all of our majors and minors, we are able to help you piece together your college career like a puzzle to match both your interests and your career aspirations on campus. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. Inside the classroom, you'll never have a class larger than 25 students. I did go to school at Jacksonville University for undergrad and graduate school. I never had a, my largest class that I took as a freshman was 18 students. By the time I was in my master's year, it was eight. And I actually am a professor at JU right now. And the largest class I've taught is 22. So we really do stick to that. Um, we have four colleges, five schools, and two institutes as well, which you can see on this screen. So inside the classroom, we are a small school. We really pride ourselves on that. You're not going to be sitting in a lecture hall with you and 300 of your closest friends. Your professors are going to stand up there and talk to you for 30 to 45 minutes, but then they're going to do things like present you with case studies, get those critical thinking skills in action. That way you're not just sitting in a classroom and hearing about something for four years. You're actually going to be able to experience that early on and know if that's something you want to do for the rest of your life. Outside of, the, outside of the classroom, we do have that big school feel. Over 100 different clubs, organizations, and activities happening. Concerts, festivals, Greek life, the whole shebang. So if there's something that you're interested in that we don't have, like most universities, you can start it yourself. But we do really pride ourselves on having that great balance between the small school feel inside the classroom while still maintaining that large school feel outside. You are able to see some of our most popular organizations here, as well as, you know, fine arts exhibitions happening, intramural sports. Um, obviously, COVID changed that a little bit, but we are back in action, fully functioning as well, which is really great for our students that missed out on those opportunities last year. As far as being small but mighty, we do have 17 Division I athletic teams and two varsity sports teams. So we are extremely proud. Again, small but mighty, but we do compete and beat up on some of the best and the baddest. So go Fins, that is our mascot, the Jacksonville University Dolphins. And really quickly, I wanna walk through how to become a Fin. We are a college campus that actually has our mascot on campus. My background right here, this is actually our background on campus. We do have dolphins in our backyard. So if you decide to travel from Colorado to Florida on spring break or something like that, we'd love to see you and show you around. 
we are rolling admissions, which means that we do not have a specific deadline that you can that you need to apply by. Our application opens in August of your senior year. You can apply anytime throughout your senior year, although we do recommend August to about December. That way, when you're applying to other universities, you can follow that same timeline. The earlier you apply, it allows us more time to make a decision and allows you more time to make your final decision. Our middle 50% profile is seen right here. Our average GPA is a 3.58. As far as test scores go, we are test optional, which means that you do not have to submit your SAT or ACT scores. So it is truly up to you if you want to send those. I always recommend take a look at our averages. If it looks like something that aligns with that and you feel confident in it, awesome. If not, don't worry about it. I don't want to see it. Our application, as I said, opens August 1st for all of our seniors and the FAFSA opens October 1st, which is this next week, which is the application for financial aid. As far as our cost of tuition, our cost of tuition can be seen at the top, but the more important number on here is that 94% of students qualify for institutional scholarship and aid, which means that the day you get your acceptance letter from JU is also the day that you are going to receive your scholarship offer. That is just step one is financial aid. My team and I are really here to help you through that entire process, meaning that we're going to get you admitted to JU, but we're also going to talk with you and your family on is JU the best fit for you academically, financially, athletically, whatever you're looking for in your college career. You can see our merit scholarship breakdown here as well. And we do also offer additional scholarships for fine arts, being a legacy, visiting, coming to one of our campus events or coming on a campus tour and those pieces. As far as some additional types of financial aid, we do offer those merit scholarships like I talked about, but we also do work with our financial aid office should you choose to file the FAFSA to distribute aid, federal aid, work study, and then we also have some additional types of aid. Um, so outside scholarships, now's the time to apply. If you are planning on doing so, we can definitely accept those as well. But for tomorrow, our students, um, our most recent graduating class, their average starting salary is 56,000. I actually believe that number increased recently. Um, but here's some of the companies that our graduates are working for, some local companies, national companies, and global companies that our students are proudly representing Jacksonville University and see for yourself. I would love to have you join us on campus. Like I said, uh, my contact information is here. I also put it in the chat as well as some helpful links that will allow you to see campus from a student perspective. Takes you to another link, takes you to a link of all of our events and then also our hype video. So I'd love to see you on campus or virtually soon. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Lastly, you'll be hearing from Gad. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha. I'm an assistant director of admission at SCAD, which stands for the Savannah College of Art and Design. And I do want to show you all of the different majors that we have at our university. We actually have more programs of study and specializations in the fields of art and design than any other school in the United States. So if you are the type of person who's interested in the building arts, we have architecture, interior design, preservation design, if you're more of a STEM focused person, we have user experience design. We also have interactive design and game development, service design, and we even have fine arts programs too, like our illustration, our photography, and our painting programs. So we do really offer a lot. If you are the type of person who is creative and you're an inventor or a researcher, we really do have majors and minors to match all of those different career goals for you at SCAD. And we are a fully accredited university. Our programs have been ranked both nationally and internationally by some really impressive organizations. I do want to point out that our motion media graphics program has been ranked to be the best in the world. Our interior design program is also number one in the country. And we've received that ranking from Design Intelligence for eight years. So we are really, really proud of our different academic programs. Also something that's super important to us is that you're becoming successful after you graduate from SCAD. We survey our alumni every single year of our spring 2020 graduates, 99% of those students were either employed, they were seeking further education or they were doing both within 10 months of graduating from SCAD. We have held this record for four years now. It is something that everyone at our university is really passionate about from our career and alumni success department to over 620 different employer visits each year. 
um, like I said, career preparation is really at the heart of SCAD's mission. And we have a few different campuses, even though we're located, um, or even though we're called the Savannah College of Art and Design, we also have a campus in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they're about four hours apart from one another. We do have an entire study abroad campus in Lacoste, France, which is in Southern France. And then we also have an e-learning online campus that gives students the flexibility to study whenever and wherever. There are some students who have earned their degrees completely online without ever stepping foot on a SCAD campus. Across our different campuses, we have about 15,000 students. They come from all 50 states in over 100 different countries. Just about 25% of our student body population is international students. And our alumni go on to work for some really incredible places like Netflix, Gucci, and Pixar. And when you graduate from SCAD, you become a part of our elite global alumni network that has 50,000 people. I do also wanna share with you that you will have access to the best resources. We have industry leading technology in both our Atlanta and our Savannah campus. We have XR stages. And then also in our Savannah campus, we're currently in the process of building the largest Hollywood style uh, university backlot. So basically our film and television students are gonna have a mini town free of distractions where they can come up with any type of set that they can imagine. Another resource that you'll have access to is our different museums. We have one on each campus. This is SCAD FASH, which is our museum in Atlanta dedicated to fashion and film. Right now we are exhibiting Ruth E. Carter's work on the Black Panther. My favorite part of SCAD is the SCAD Pro Department. So at SCAD, we have an entire program dedicated. It's basically like an in-house internship opportunity where our students get to come up with real world design solutions for global brands. We've done over 500 different SCAD Pro projects with companies like Uber and L'Oreal and Google and Amazon. Over 200 students have gotten job offers just from the SCAD Pro projects that they've worked on. Another resource that you'll have access to is SCAD AMP, which is our professional presentation studio led by our communication coaches at SCAD. So we will prepare you for an interview, we'll prepare you for giving a TED talk, we'll prepare you for an elevator pitch, all of these different levels of communication that you will find important as a professional in the industry. We set you up for success through different workshops specific to this department. And then um, when you do come to SCAD, you get to call our incredible residence halls home. This is an image of our campus in Atlanta, Georgia. In the center is that main SCAD building. And then off to the side is the residence hall. So you would be living in a Skyrise building that's part of the Atlanta skyline. And you also don't have to give up athletics to go to art and design school. We have a number of really successful athletic teams. We also have an equestrian studies program. We have an entire barn right on the Georgia, South Carolina border. And then also too, we do have some really exciting pre-college summer programs. So for ninth, 10th and 11th grade students, you're able to come on to SCADS campus ahead of time, take some workshop courses and really engage in our college to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, we also do have joint enrollment opportunities. So if you want to take online classes throughout your time in high school and earn some of those SCAD college credits, you're able to do so. As far as the application process goes, it's really straightforward. You can either apply on the Common App or you can apply directly through SCAD's website. When you do apply, we assign you a personal SCAD admission advisor that will guide you throughout the overall admission process. We would need your um, SAT or ACT test scores if you are a junior um, or lower grades, but for seniors, we have waived those requirements. And we would also need your high school transcripts as well too. We don't require a portfolio for admission, but if you do submit one, you would be reviewed for an additional scholarship opportunity. And then definitely come visit us. Um, we do host virtual tours and we also host in-person tours. We also have our SCAD day events that take place throughout the year. These are open house days where you really get an in-depth look 
at what our campus has to offer. And I do wanna say thank you all again. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I would like to invite everyone to come back on and do a quick round of Q and A. Um, so in the same order that you presented in, starting with Lynn University, if everyone could just share what advice you would give someone going through the college search process. My piece of advice for you all is that there is no dumb or silly question. There is no small question. Ask questions, ask when you can come to campus. Can you sit in on a class? Can you meet a current student? Can you have lunch with a faculty member or professor? Choosing a college is a really difficult time and we understand that. So ask questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. Just ask um, and everyone on campus is, is uh, happy to help. I think my biggest piece of advice is that you're going to receive a ton of mail and email if you are not already. Um, and it is going to be so much more helpful to segment that into a specific college email if you can. Um, so make yourself a specific email that you're using just for college admissions and check it frequently because that's how you'll find out about like special programs you might be eligible for, scholarships, all sorts of stuff. Um, so check your email frequently. We know you're receiving a lot of it, but we're trying not to drown you. Um, I would say I have talked to a lot of students over the past couple of years, um, and a lot of them get worried about what they're going to major in and everything like that. Um, so I would say don't get too hung up on like what you want to major in if you don't know yet. You can start going to school even if you don't know yet, um, and that is perfectly fine. A lot of times people don't even end up doing a job in exactly what they majored in, so it's fine. Um, but when you're looking at colleges, the main thing is that you just wanna make sure that it's a place that you feel like um, you can fit in and thrive and that you um, you know, will enjoy just as a person overall, like regardless of the program. So visit, um, visiting is the most important thing, I would say to really just kind of get a feel um, for the school itself and to see if it's something um, that you can picture yourself at. That is all great advice so far. You should all take their advice. Um, my biggest piece of advice is going to be the most cliche, um, is to follow your gut. Um, you're gonna start to visit colleges and you're gonna, uh, for me, I made Excel charts on like positives and negatives, um, but ultimately it came down to, for me, like which school did I feel most at home at? Which school, um, you know, like I just remembered such silly things about the college tour um, that really stood out to me. And from what I've seen from students who have enrolled either at Eckerd or even other colleges and universities, they often end up happiest when they are most authentic with their college search and um, look at colleges based on who they are and where they feel they can fit. So trust your gut um, and do some research. Ditto to everything everyone else said, but I will say um, you're going to have a lot of options. So the same way that you're going to lay out all of your acceptance letters when you get those and visit schools you haven't visited yet and you start to narrow that list down, you're going to do the same thing with your financial aid offers. And so really utilizing your admissions counselors and staff, whoever your main point of contact is, work with them. They're there to help you kind of make that decision for not only just you, but also you and your family if they're helping you with college as well. So make sure that you take the time to do that. And again, never be scared to ask them questions. Our whole day is here for you. We're here to help answer those. So we're excited to talk to you. My best piece of advice would be to look at student work and student projects, whether that's through a college's website or through alumni Instagrams, um, really see what the students are coming out of that university with and the skill set that they're building. Great. Thank you all so much for joining us and thank you everyone for sharing. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back at the schedule and sign up for more sessions. And you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. So thank you everyone. Um, I do see a couple of Q and A questions and we have about 30 seconds left so I can move the Zoom running for a little bit longer so those can get answered.
All right, that is the end of our webinar. So thank you everyone again for joining us. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye.